this is number two building and it is going to be the mansion and the mansion is going to be mostly red except for the cobblestone towers cobblestone towers are going to be a different um, different technique um, I kind of touched on it on the funeral parlor but you'll get to see it in more detail with a little bit more time taken on the cobblestones because they are such a major part of this house so the first color I'm going to be doing is the barn red because that's the color I'm going to do on the wood portions. Now what I'm going to do as I'm painting, I'm going to start and I'm going to show some of the painting, um, but I am not going to paint the whole thing on camera. I will hit pause um, when I, like, I'll finish this first side and then when I get to go to the other sides, that's when I'll hit pause and just get the painting done because I don't think you guys want to sit there and, and watch me paint every single little inch of the buildings. If I'm wrong, let me know down below and I'll change the way I do the videos. Um, but I'm just going in and painting all the wood, the barn red. And I'm being a little careful not to get too much onto the details, but I'm not really worrying about it that much because I'm going to go back and paint over it. All I'm doing is I'm just simply putting on the paint color. I am going to have to decide on a accent color besides the roof color because I have this wonderful little accent here and here and all these little details coming down and I want them to stand out from the rest of it and there's some detail work in the window area that's going to show through so I need oops paint down into some cobblestone See, I'm just wiping it away. And if I really needed to wipe it back more, I could use a, um, a wet wipe to wipe it back more. And I got just a little bit more on this little turret right here than what I wanted. I'm just going to wipe that back just a little bit. That's the other reason for base coating is when you make a, mis a mistake in air quotes, it's um, a little easier to quote unquote erase that mistake. probably not going to want this to be the red, but I'm doing it red right now. I'll need to come back through with a finer brush. And I'll probably have to rebrush the, the red anyway when I go to do the windows. And to 
get the color of red since I'm using a lesser quality paint I'll probably need to do two coats okay so that's me painting this side I'm gonna go paint this side this side and this side and then I'll be back um, to show the cobblestoning I think is going to be next um, the roof is going to be a, a lighter gray oh, I'm sweating and sticking to the paper <laughs> so the roof is going to be a lighter gray a dark well I should say a darkish gray and uh, with some light gray highlights um, okay so I will be back Okay, I've got the barn red done in the areas that I want it. I'm still trying to debate on what colors I want for my uh, accents. Wow, that was a hard time. Okay, I'm going to start on the back cobble tower because there's more area it'll be easier for you guys to see um, I went and got a very very special technical te very technical uh, utensil and it's toothpicks toothpicks are great for getting into small details and then q-tips are great for quote-unquote erasing your mistakes quote-unquote um, or making dots. So I went ahead and got a couple Q-tips just to be ready and I picked out some colors that I want. Well the camera cut out so I'm not sure well I, I'm sure now because I went back and looked over and it didn't tell me when um, I didn't get to say what colors and everything that's when it cut out so when I'm cobblestoning I typically pick out about four colors and they kind of seem a little bit cartoony when you're first getting used to the idea of cobblestoning you don't want all of your rocks to just be gray and, and black there, there's a whole bunch more color of stones out there. So the um, first color is a pink. Let's see, get that, figure it out. Okay, there, a pink. And then uh, a blue that's kind of like a, a denim blue of sorts. This one actually ended up being a little bit brighter than I actually wanted. And then, of course, a creamish brown. There we go. And then a, a midnight blue. And I know these colors are going to sound a little bit scary when you first start uh, watching the video, um, but don't be afraid, okay? Okay. I'm not sure when that cut out, um, but you just take the pink paint on the tip of your toothpick and you make sure you have enough light to see what you're working on. to do that part. I'm blind as a bat. Okay. And then you just apply the paint with the toothpick, toothpick onto random stones. I'm going to do a few more because, like I said, I'm not sure when my camera cut out at this point. Let me hold it up here. And yes, I know it's pink. I know you're probably 
saying that there's no way this will look natural. But in the end, it will. Okay? And then you take like your denim color and a toothpick for that one. And again, randomly fill in the cobblestones. gonna kind of show each color so here is the pink and the blue in that one little area Now when I'm doing cobblestone, I try to do it to where, like if I'm using four colors, I sort of leave space for four colors. Like I try to sort of count out four, but then on the ones that are not the natural looking colors to start with, like the pink and the blue. I don't use them as much. Those are more accent. So as you see me putting in the tan, I'm putting in it, I'm putting it in a bit more than what I did the pink and the blue. I was going to use pavement, but I think I'm going to go back to the midnight blue.
so that's kind of how it's going to look for a little while. Now I'm going to stop and I'm going to finish all this cobblestone on this turret and this turret and all the cobblestone around the base of the building. Okay? And when I come back, we'll be doing the roof and then um, the accents. All right, see you soon. Okay, I just got done doing all of the cobblestoning. I know it looks a little cartoony, and that's okay. It's supposed to at this point. Okay. Now, there was a couple places where my fingers got messy, and I made smudges. So, here comes the Q-tip. I said earlier that the Q-tip is great for erasing areas that you don't want and making dots. So this is how you're going to erase. You're going to wet the tip of your Q-tip and you're just going to rub it back and forth in the area that you got the paint that you don't want. Now I did get paint down on the wood columns down there. I'm not going to worry about erasing that because I still have to paint the wood column. But there was another spot where my fingers got crazy. And I ended up with little blue spots over here on my wood. This is going to be a little bit harder because the wood is painted with acrylic already where the black is that base coat. So just work at it slowly so you don't take off too much of your actual paint color. Which I am, but that's okay. Because <clears throat> I can either go back over and paint it or I can leave it and it'll show up as a more distressed area. That's totally your choice. Okay, so now with the cobblestoning done, I'm going to do the roof. And the roof is going to be done in the pavement color. So I'm going to want a bit more out than what I've been doing. And then I'm going to paint the roof. I'm going to do all of the roof in the pavement color, except for these like little decorative areas. I'm going to do those areas a different color. Still have not decided what color I'm going to do that. just painted all that off of camera. I'll do one more side. It's I try not to get any paint on the area that I don't want painted, but I also don't worry about it too terribly much. I'm 
just working my brush back and forth or up and down to work the color into those tiles. Okay, now I'm going to turn you off again and I'll be back after I have all the roofs done and then we'll do the windows and hopefully have decided a accent color for all the little details. Alright, catch you soon. Okay. Just kind of showing the roof has been painted in that slate roof color, the pavement color that I wanted it. And I've decided I'm going to get just a little bit fancy on the roof and I figured this would be one of those kinds of roofs that they would have um, copper on the caps and down the, the like a band around the turret um, and on these two little roofs here so I'm going to do copper patina in, in, a, in a way on these. Um, so I'm going to show how to do, I'm going to do the dry brushing on the windows and then I'm going to get the areas that are going to be copper. Um, I'm going to get them primed with a caramel candy brown. It's just going to be a, a light brown shade. Um, a little bit darker than the sandstone that I've been using, but for the windows, we need a little bit of white. with just a touch of a light blue. Just a touch of a light blue. <laughs> Looks like I made an eyeball. It's an eyeball. a blue that is as light as you would be making but I don't because I figure I'll just make up what little bit I do need all right so this is gonna be that dry brushing so you load up your brush and then you unload it Once you think, think you've had it unloaded, check it on your hand because if it comes off on your hand, like how much it came off on here, that was too much. But by the time I got over here, we're okay. So we're just going to go in and lightly dry brush on the window panes. before I do the detail around the window that way if I get a little bit messy it's okay when you go to reload your brush again make sure that you're reloading from out here where you where you pulled off your color so that way and I didn't get it But if you reload from where you took the paint off, then you're not getting as thick of a reload. And you won't have to 
wipe off as much, typically. This poor little brush is getting a little bit banged up. See on these small windows, these small windows, it's hard to stay in the lines when you're dry brushing. So that's why I don't do the window edges until after I have dry brushed the windows. too terribly much because you are going to be doing a wash or an antiquing over all this. So like I got this window right here a little bit wider than what I really wanted it but I can just tone that down when I do the wash. taking your time and doing it, you'll, in the end, you will like your outcome so much more. Like taking the time to do all those little, all those little dots of cobblestone. have little marks where I should have cut them out, but I tend not to cut out the ones on the back, yeah, because when you put a light in, you're gonna, you're gonna waste a lot of light coming out from the back side of your thing, and have light going up your wall. So, I don't cut out the back, that way you have more light coming out the front.
is oh I forgot a window <laughs> totally mess, missed it and I don't mind making mistakes in front of you guys because I, I feel like if I make the mistake see that nobody's perfect, that, you know, I'm just like, I'm just like you guys. Okay, so, there are the windows with a fast dry brush for the window panes. Okay. Now, the areas that I'm going to end up doing copper with a patina, now, this patina that I'm doing is not the patina that we posted um, about the horse and the actual, like, um, it's not quite an acid wash that's used, but um, it's not, it's not that same thing. This is going to be something that you can do to get a quick patina look without having to buy a whole bunch of special things. That's what this whole, almost this whole project is about, is just kind of showing everyone how you can still do all of this. Beautiful, beautiful outcome, even without being a master. Dun, dun, dun. sitting here looking at this house when I was um, painting the roof and I was like, you know what, this looks like one of those kind of houses that would have a um, copper cap. So anywhere that I want to do the copper, I'm putting a base coat of a light brown because when you paint with a metallic paint, it doesn't like to show up without a base coat underneath you. You can, you can do it, you can paint metallics without a base coat, but then you have to end up painting a ton layers. Oh, I'm probably out of frame right now, but I'm working on this back part of the turret, and that's really hard. Okay. Sorry, guys. Sorry, everybody. And I'm going to do along this detail on the roof and the detail here. And this little area here is going to be a metal cap as well. I'm 
I'm going to pause here. I'm going to finish painting out any of the areas that I'm going to make be metallic. Um, and of course, we're going to have to age the copper because this is a dilapidated town that has been abandoned. So the copper would have that, that greenish patina look to it. Okay, pausing and I'll be back. Okay, so now I have all of the copper along the trim on the little tiny roofs. And then I also decided to do the porch and the pillars in a cream and I did a burgundy stripe on part of the columns. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a Q-tip with some burgundy and do some of the finer work on the door. And then I'm also going to dry brush some gray over the cobblestone and then show you a fake patina that we can do on the coppering. Okay, so first I'm going to do the dry brushing. And for that, I'm going to use some gray. And you always want to make sure your brush is really dry for dry brushing. You load up some color, and then you wipe it back off where there's almost nothing left and then I always just check on my hand like that first swipe if I had done that on the um, piece that would have been way too much in the one area so now that I have my brush ready I'm going to take it and I'm just going to lightly go over some of the cobblestone and this might not be a really good brand to do this with. There we go. I always have a hard time getting started on dry brushing. Dry brushing is not my favorite technique. But for cobblestone it is worth it. And then the final step on the cobblestone will come in play when we do the black and brown, reddish brown wash. That will finish out the look on this cobblestone. Just working some of the gray onto some of that blue and pink just a little bit more.
that is okay. I'm going to take a Q-tip. I'm going to wet it. And I'm going to erase where that gray accidentally went. That is one of the upsides to base coating your pieces and working with acrylics. Water helps remove the paint from areas that you didn't want it to get. There we go, see? That's already toning down those comical colors. Now when I made the decision to do the copper on the detail, I was like, mm, that probably didn't, they probably only used it on the caps of the, of the houses. I don't remember seeing anything where it's on the details. So I went and I did a search for, um, oh, how did I word it? Um, oops. I worded I worded it uh, copper trimmed Victorian house I found a house that was indeed copper trimmed and like not just on the caps of the peaks but completely trimmed So I was like, holy cow, it's a real thing. Shoot fly, don't bother me. Alright, where did my... fly visiting me. Now 
if you did some detail work before you did the dry brushing and you got it on your detail work, you can either go back over it like I'm doing with the Q-tip or just go paint back over it with your detail color. Whichever. Alright. Detail work with a toothpick. I'm going to fix this window. Now, some detail on the door, I'm trying to decide where or where I'm going to put I think I'm going to do this outer circle I'll change how I'm holding it. It always ends up happening to me. I always end up getting a weird grip on the toothpick. Sometimes a toothpick will end up with a dried glob at the end that you might need to go and clean off or switch ends. Honestly, I think I hate painting doors. Yep. I think this is working out. And remember, doing all these little details, making sure you take your time, don't rush it, will really help the piece look better in the end. 
around. You'll look back on it a little bit more enjoyably. I got a little bit too wide on my circle. Over on this side. go. Okay. So that is how I did the door. Okay, we have dry brushed the cobbles. Now, hmm, going to attempt a patina. And this is going to be the weird part. I'm going to do a lime green. And a turquoise. about 50-50 on those colors. I'll mix it up real good. Because when you go and you look up all Victorian copper trimmed houses, that copper has turned to a green. It's not quite lime green but not quite a turquoise either, so it's something in between. So that's kind of what you're going for. Okay. And then we're gonna do, hopefully, a dry brushing. It's not exactly a dry brushing because you want to leave more green. But not too much. So it's a. If you dry brush, you can build it up slowly. And that way people can tell that it was copper underneath. Sorry, I probably came off of camera just then.
see how that's looking. I'm going to go through and I'm going to do all of that. If you don't have copper metallic paint, you could probably get away with doing a, um, just painting a brown and then doing the lime green over the brown to um, mimic the fact that it was a copper. If you put a little too much on in one area, you can wipe it back. Um, I just used my finger to wipe back. I'd gotten it too dark around here, a little more green than I wanted it to be, so I just used my finger and wiped it back. If it had already dried, I could have used um, a wet Q-tip. Stick into my paper. Okay. I just gotta get this side of the roof.
Of course, I'm putting the green paint right where I don't want to, but that's okay. I can go and fix that. <laughs> well, apparently I didn't want to use that Q-tip. So I picked it up and then threw it away. Now, if I was working in here and I couldn't get into the edge where I needed to go, I could just as easily get my um, the paint that I used, the color for the roof, and just paint back into that area if I wanted to. But the other good thing is this is going to be a haunted village, so you don't have to worry about perfection because you are going to just gunk it up the end of it all which I have realized I didn't do the little uh, pieces that came down there so I need to do that real quick now initially I had tried to make a patina wash but I realized with the look I was going to go for, the patina wash would not work. For that. Because it would patina everything. And that's not what I'm going for, obviously. So what I'm going to do is i got to paint up these little pieces that I forgot, got to let them dry, then patina those, and then come back and do the wash. I do believe after I patina those little pieces that I forgot right there. Um, it'll be time to do the washes on this house and then we'll be considered done. Alright, so I'm going to pause the video here and when I come back it'll be time to do the washes. I won't show the patina in of these few little pieces because you've already seen it. Alright, I will be back. Okay, I'm back and I kind of like I forgot to dry brush the roof so I'm using the the same gray just a plain old gray that I used on the cobble to kind of dry brush on the roof to give it that more worn out look and there it is I need just a tiny bit more See, I got too much there. So I didn't make sure I wiped off my brush. And again. All right. Now for the fun part. Got my wash. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wash the cobblestone with the black wash real good and intense.
this is going to help it look more like stone than anything else. Don't know why I put the wash over there. I should have just left it on the side that I paint with. See that? And I want it to basically kind of sit in place, kind of permeate. Now, if I was painting this as like a real house in a village, I would have done this part before doing the trim or anything else. Because utterly making a mess up underneath. But because this is going to be all washed, I'm not too worried. I just want to concentrate the wash on the cobblestone so that it keeps the color there and makes it look more like real stone. And then the rest of the house, we'll do the wash like we did with the funeral parlor, where I just kind of pour it on and let it run as it will. to get that good and grimy look. And you know what? I might experiment and do some of the green wash that I made too. Just to kind of see what it looks like. thing that I'm really doing when I'm doing this is I'm making sure that I really cover the pink and the blue to tone down those two particular colors so they look more natural. So there is the cobblestone with the black wash over it, and that gives it a more realistic 
look with some color interest. And it's not just flat black and gray. Or I shouldn't say flat, monochromatic black and gray. Okay. Now it's time for the wash. My table is not flat. All right, I will be back after this dries to do the red wash. I don't want to I don't want to do too much while it's all wet, so I'll just wait. And again, this is also why you have it on the waxy side is so that this step doesn't stick. And all I'm doing right now is I just decided to kind of move some of the wash off of the porch so that it's not just a big black blob. And what I'm using is Q-tip. As I want a little bit more of the brown to show up on there, I think. Okay, be back once this is dry. Okay, it's kind of dry most places. So now we're going to do the reddish brown wash and this one I'm gonna kind of brush on how I did the last one and make sure that I concentrate it more in certain areas this back just a little bit and I kind of leave it the way it's you know standing up so that as things move it moves in a more natural pattern And I actually grime up the areas that I'm wanting to grime up. I think I'm going to have to find a way to get another camera so that I can have a different angle kind of show up for everybody.
don't forget to grime the windows. Now I'm going to let this dry and I'll come back and show you the finished piece. Okay, so here is the finished house. Now some of the patina had gotten washed away during the wash um, effect. So I just went back and did another quick dry brushing of the green patina color. That's not going to work. it's just be a little bit more green in a couple areas so I'm just going to do that real quick Okay, so there I've touched up the green patina in a couple of areas, and that is the finished mansion. Well, finished until we get to the tail end of everything where I'm going to put on some extra little details and um, give everything a matte spray coat just to kind of protect it. Yep, that won't be done until, until the end when I am done adding all sorts of little fun things. Okay, that's it guys. If you like this video, make sure you hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Do a thumbs up, thumbs down, whichever, they both help. And... Uh, Make sure you hit that little bell notification so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. And with that, I'll catch you on the next one.